G'day. In this tutorial, we're just going to quickly look at what gimbal lock is. Now, a gimbal lock is a problem you get with rotational data in 3D applications when you're using the X, Y, and Z Euler rotation system. Now, X, Y, Z Euler rotation records a keyframe and a motion curve for each of these different axes of rotation. But the computer needs to be able to link these together in a way so your objects will rotate correctly. And unfortunately, this also creates its own set of problems. Now, it works out like this. If I rotate it along the X here, over the nose of the plane, you get a nice motion like this. Now, if I rotate it along the Y, you don't really have a problem. It's doing exactly what it's meant to be doing. Now, if I rotate it along the Z, I'll just do it in the middle here. What we want it to do is spin around like that while it's spinning in the other directions. But if I actually animate that, the animation is all strange. Now watch the beginning of the animation. Kind of goes backwards and forwards. And this is because of gimbal lock. And I'll show you exactly why that happens. Now, in this one here, I've set it up so these three circles represent the different axes of rotation. We have the x-axis is red, the y-axis is green, and the z-axis is blue. Now, if you rotate along the x-axis, it just moves by itself. It's a completely independent rotation because it's the very first rotation in the computer's rotational order. And then the Y rotation pulls the X along with it, like so. And the Z rotation pulls both the X and the Y. So a gimbal lock is when your axes of rotations lock together in a way that creates these problems and I'll show you what I mean. So if I rotate along the Y like so, we now have the X rotational axis and the Z rotational axis will be doing the exact same function visually. Like see if I now rotate in the X, rotates the plane like that, and if I rotate in the Y, it also rotates the plane in the exact same way, and that is a gimbal lock. Now, one thing to quickly note is that the X, of course, is still only moving by itself, while the Z is pulling along everything with it. So let's uh, have a quick look exactly how this functions in the animation we did at the beginning. So I'll come over here, I'll do my auto keys. I'll rotate 360 degrees in the X. I'll ro rotate 360 degrees in the Y. And I'll ro rotate 360 degrees in the Z. Now let's have a quick look at exactly what's going on here. The x-axis is pulling the nose of the plane down, while the y-axis is pulling it over the wingtips. That's why you're getting that movement there. Meanwhile, the z-axis is pulling it around in a circle from tip to tail. From uh, tip to tail. Now, when it gets to here, where the gimbal lock happens. The Z axis is now pulling the X and the Y in the same direction, which flips it over here. 
like so, pretty much back into its original position. And that is an example of how gimbal lock will affect your animations. And the biggest problem, of course, with gimbal lock is that in your motion editor, you have your three different curves. And if your X curve and your Z curve are doing the exact same function, after a while of animating, you'll end up with an incredibly messy and impossible to read uh, graph editor. And uh, that's what Gimbal Lock is.